everyone, this is Colleen Lemma, Starseed Astrologer and Spiritual Messenger from SacredSoulEmpowerment.com, here to do your weekly angel card reading for Monday, February 6th through Sunday, February 12th, 2017. For this weekly reading, we're going to be using the Fairy Tarot Deck by Doreen Virtue, and your special message card, depending on your stone of choice this week, is going to come from the Magical Mermaids and Dolphins Deck, which is also by Doreen Virtue. So let's take a look first before we get into the astrology for the week. Let's take a look at what our special stones of choice are. Now, you might notice that all three of these stones have an orange kind of color to them, an orange tint to them, and that is because we have a full moon lunar eclipse in the sign of Leo this week. And whenever I think of the sign of Leo, I think of the solar plexus and the sacral chakra area. So it's that yellow, golden yellow, and orange kind of color, which deals with creativity. So all three of these stones, because they are orange in color, all three of them do deal with creative self-expression to some extent. Now this first one is orange calcite. And among the creative aspect of orange calcite, this also helps to balance your emotions it helps to remove energies of fear. It helps to overcome depression energies. So if you're dealing with a lot of emotional things, this might be a stone of choice for you this week. The orange calcite also helps to maximize your potential as far as creative self-expression and furthering your life path energies. Okay, the second stone of choice, <clears throat> excuse me, now this is amber. Now amber can come in different colors. It can come in a light yellow color, more of a, a golden yellow color. This is kind of an orange yellow color and amber also comes in a greenish color as well. Now the amber is a really powerful healer. It's really good for absorbing and transmuting negative or lower vibrational energies, emotions. It's a strong stone for protection, and it helps to bring a sense of wisdom as well. Now, remember again, don't forget, it's also great for any sacral and solar plexus chakras. Uh, as far as the willpower, owning your willpower, your power, and creative self-expression, just like all of them are. Okay, the last stone of choice, this is a citrine cluster a small citrine cluster. And again, citrine is normally more of a sunny yellow color, but this particular citrine has a little bit of orangish color in it, as you can see. So it's kind of that blend again of both the sacral and solar plexus chakra. The citrine specifically is a highly creative stone and it's a powerful cleanser and regenerator of lower vibrational energies. It helps to dissipate and transmute those energies to a higher vibration, this stone never needs cleansing. Just like the other, uh, as far as the other stones and crystals are concerned, you have to cleanse them every once in a while. But the citrine is a self-cleansing stone. This is also um, a stone that helps to open your intuition. And it's considered a stone of abundance as well. So again, your three stones of choice are the orange calcite, the amber, and the golden citrine for this week. So let's take a little bit of a look first at the astrology for the week. And we have a very powerful week of energy um, going on. We start out on Monday the 6th of February with Jupiter, the planet of blessings, the planet of expansion, the planet of abundance and prosperity, the planet that rules our belief systems. It's finally going into retrograde motion. Remember earlier on in January and after Mercury retrograde went back to direct motion, I said all of the planets are in direct motion now until February 6th. Well, this is the first planet now that's going to go into retrograde motion, Jupiter. It goes retrograde at 23 degrees of Libra, and Libra is a sign that rules balance, harmony, relationships, partnerships, equality, justice. So with Jupiter going retrograde, we're going to be focused on our belief systems regarding those things, our belief systems regarding balance, harmony, equality, justice, relationships, partnerships. And this is relationships and partnerships of all kinds. So whether it be romantic partnerships, business partnerships, 
um, any one-on-one -on -one relationship we have with others, so that can include friends and family, we are going within and we're we're going within uh, on a thoughtful level. You know, this is kind of an inner expression now of Jupiter. So we're going within on this thoughtful level of really um, accessing our belief systems, studying our own inner belief systems, understanding our belief systems, and maybe where we need to tweak those belief systems or expand them out in a different way or look at things from a different perspective to evolve our way of looking at things to fit where we are in our growth and evolution as a soul because we're always growing we're always expanding we are always changing we are always in a process of evolution and where we were 10 years ago or five years ago or last year in 2016 or where we were even a month or two months ago is changing and now we have to really, again, reflect on and understand how our belief systems about ourselves, our life path, our destiny path, our relationships, how those, those areas in our lives are changing and redirecting in such a way that it aligns us to a more uh, positive or authentic expression of ourselves. Now on Tuesday the 7th, oh by the way, Jupiter is going to be retrograde for quite a while. It, it's actually retrograde all the way until June 9th. So we're in a retrograde motion with Jupiter from 23 degrees Libra all the way back to 13 degrees Libra before it turns direct on June 9th. So we'll have a long period of time to, to look at, again, our belief systems. Okay, they're also saying to mention the, the aspect of abundance with Jupiter. Because it's about expansion and abundance and blessings and prosperity, Jupiter retrograde, it doesn't mean that there's no abundance or no prosperity or, or you know, blessings. It means that we have to find them within ourselves, that we have to change our belief systems in such a way that we understand that each and every day and each and every opportunity of each and every day is an expression of the blessings from the universe and, and an expression of the abundance within ourselves. We have to bring that abundance within ourselves that is about, uh, you know, our own gifts and our own uh, divinity. We have to bring that out into expression. So we're taking the inner abundance and prosperity and we're going to be understanding how we bring it out and we put it out into external circumstances. Okay, so Tuesday the 7th, Mercury... Mercury is the planet of the mind, the mental realm. It rules our thoughts, our ideas, our, our communications, how we communicate with other people. And it's leaving Capricorn, which is a, a sign of the zodiac that rules our career and our life path and who we are out in the world and how successful we are and how we're recognized for what we do out in the world on that career level. Now it's moving into Aquarius. It's not going to be in Aquarius for that long. It's only going to be into, in Aquarius until February 25th. So during this time of Mercury in Aquarius, that's actually a very good placement for Mercury because Mercury is, again, that mental planet. And Aquarius is an air sign, and all the air signs are connected to the mental realm. They're connected to communication, thoughts, ideas, just like Mercury. So this is going to be a really great placement to brainstorm new ideas, to connect with other people of like mind or groups of people to discuss things and how can we better the planet and what new inspirational ideas can we come up with that, that will further our, our goals for humanitarian evolution and growth. And, you know, it's, it's not just about humanity in the planet, but Aquarius really is a humanitarian type of sign, so it does really deal with that kind of energy, but it's also very scientific. It's also very eclectic. It's also very, um, what do I want to say, very intuitive as well. So Mercury in Aquarius is going to be heightening our intuitive faculties, our ability to receive messages from spirit or our guides and our angels, and it's also going to be a time to work on or come up with new ways of expressing through technology, you know, Aquarius rules technology and uh, computers and, you know, phones and it rules astrology even. So all of these things is where we can put our mind and come up with these new and innovative, again, ideas or ways to further 
our personal plan and again our plan on our more group humanitarian or global level. Now this is the exciting part. We have a full moon lunar eclipse at 22 degrees Leo that comes to a head on Friday, February 10th. Now when we have a full moon, we already know that the energies are intensifying. All full moons intensify the energies because that's when the moon is the fullest. You know, it brings that fullest expression of whatever sign of the zodiac the full moon is occurring in. Now, the fact that it's a lunar eclipse, the lunar eclipse energy intensifies it even more. And when we have lunar eclipses and when we have solar eclipses, which we're going to have a new moon solar eclipse later on in the month, because the eclipses always happen in pairs. If we have a, a lunar eclipse, we're going to have a solar eclipse and vice versa. So whenever we have eclipses like this, it's really pushing us in our evolution and growth. We take big leaps and big strides in our evolution and growth as a soul and as a planet, as a humanity. And so oftentimes it can bring very significant changes and redirections. Now sometimes it can feel overwhelming, this intensification of energies, but this full moon, I have to say, is very well aspected. The moon in Leo is in a positive connection to Jupiter. Uh, the sun is in a positive connection to Jupiter. The moon is in a positive connection to Saturn. The moon is in a positive connection to Uranus. And the sun is also in a positive connection to Saturn and Uranus. And that's because, of course, the moon and the sun are opposing one another. Because the moon is at 22 degrees Leo, that means the sun is at 22 degrees of Aquarius, the opposite sign. And therefore, if one planet's expecting a planet, that means the other one is too. But they're all positive connections. Trines and sextiles are all positive. And Leo is about creative self-expression. It's about our sense of willpower, our own inner power, our own inner light, and how we shine that light out into the world. So this is really a great time to bring forth your creativity, your creative self-expression on your path in whatever way, shape, or form that is for you, really put yourself out there because this is going to be a great and powerful full moon lunar eclipse. And then we end the week on Saturday the 11th with the sun in a positive trine to Jupiter, which is a follow-up of that lunar eclipse uh, from the day before. So the sun is in Aquarius. It's positively aspecting Jupiter in Libra, which, of course, remember Monday just went into retrograde motion. So both Aquarius and Libra are air signs dealing with communication, ideas, thoughts, the mental realm. And because Aquarius is of a kind of, I don't want to say it's necessarily higher in vibration than the other signs of the zodiac, but Aquarius has this connection to universal energies, universal consciousness. And because the sun is in Aquarius and it's going to connect with Jupiter and Jupiter is a planet of expansion, it's going to expand that universal consciousness feeling to where we realize and we feel that we are connected to one another, that we're all interconnected and not just people, but people, animals, plants, rocks, crystals. I mean, we're all interconnected. So that's a little bit about the astrology, really exciting energies. Let's take a look at the cards for the week and see what the message from our angels, guides, and in this case, the fairies, because this is the fairy tarot deck, uh, is for the week. All right, so turning over the first card. Okay, we have a fire card, the spring suit, the seven of spring which again is wands or fire in the traditional tarot. The message at the bottom says, be assertive. Don't back down from what you believe. Courageously stand up for yourself. Well, that's really a lot of that solar plexus energy with the crystals that we chose, with the fact that the full moon lunar eclipse is in Leo, which rules that solar plexus area of standing in our powers, um, increasing our will, being courageous, being independent, being a leader, standing up for what we believe, and really focusing in on what that's all about. Now, the number seven, because, you know, I want to pull in a little bit of the numerology here, the number seven usually is about going within and, and doing some self-reflection. And again, we have Jupiter going into retrograde motion Monday. So here we are again, pulling within, self-reflecting on our own belief systems, our beliefs about our power, our beliefs about our 
sense of will, our courage, our beliefs about being a leader. And when I look at the imagery here, if you look here closely, we have a fairy and she's got a bow and arrow. It reminds me of um, Artemis, the goddess Artemis, or Diana, I believe, also. And it, it makes me think of really focusing on what it is that you want, keeping your eyes focused on your goals. And because we are approaching a full moon lunar eclipse this week, put your intentions out. This is, you know, this fairy, Artemis Diana, the goddesses, focus your intentions on what it is you want to bring into fruition and manifestation. Write out a list, say affirmations, meditate, especially as we get closer to that full moon lunar eclipse, and stand in your power to create the fire element, which is the spring here. The fire element is creation. It's raw creative potential. And this is where we have to focus our energies for this week. Let's take a look at the second card and get more information here as we move throughout the week. Okay, so now we have the nine of autumn. The autumn suit is pentacles or earth in the traditional tarot. And the nine of autumn says, says let's see, reward yourself. I have, I have a little bit of a glare there. Reward yourself for all your hard work being happily and successfully self-employed, and cherishing your time alone. So one of the things this card is often about is about self-employment. Um, and again, with that seven of, of spring to start us out and that creative self-expression of the seven of spring, if we focus it, if we're thinking about going into, let's say, a, a career path where we're more in charge, where we're more the boss, or if you're thinking about being self-employed, this is really a good sign this week for you as far as, again, putting out your intentions or maybe taking the steps, um, the beginning steps to make that happen or to take another step if you've already taken steps, you know, to add to it and to keep moving forward. Um, the number nine... You know, in the tarot, uh, we have 10 of the minor arcana before we get to the, um, the page and the knight and the queen and the king. So the nine being very close to the 10, which is the last of the, the minor arcana, we're getting close to fruition of something. We're getting close to manifesting something. And if you look at the imagery in this card, I love it because this angel here is sitting and she's got all these grapes around her and... Um, the pumpkin, you know, it makes me think of fall. And whenever you see an image like this, the pumpkin, the grapes, you know, I, I feel like we're, we're reaping the benefits of what the seeds that we've already sown. We're reaping the harvest of our past efforts. So we're getting close to, again, manifestation of abundance and prosperity and reaping those benefits and gaining that abundance and the blessings that we're seeking. Now, whether it is through some sort of self-employment or whether it is that you're just coming to this time in your life, this part of your life to where those seeds that you've planted in the past are now starting to grow, are now starting to flower. They're now, you know, they're past the sprouting stage. These seeds are actually flowering and they're coming to uh, its point of being able to be harvested. So we're getting really close uh, close in time period here to some wonderful things taking place. This can be some financial abundance that's coming this week as well. The number nine is a number that's very uh, humanitarian oriented as well, just like Mercury going into Aquarius, the sign of the humanitarian. So think of ideas that not just benefit you, but also benefit other people. How can you give back to humanity? How can you give back and help other people, or help the group, help the planet, help the earth? Um, and that's the true humanitarian here. It's also very creative, very artistic, very in tune to the spiritual energies, but in a very practical and earthy way. All right, let's take a look at this last card here for the week. Okay, we do have a major arcana. I was wondering if we were going to have one for the full moon lunar eclipse, and here it is. This is major arcana number 20, and in the fairy tarot deck, it's called Renewal. Let's read the message at the bottom first. It says, review the past and the present so you can plan a bright new future, understanding your life purpose, releasing judgments of yourself and others. 
Now, the traditional tarot deck, the name of this card is Judgment. This is Major Arcana 20, the Judgment card. And just as this says at the bottom, release judgments. This isn't about having judgment or being judged. This is about releasing judgments against yourself, others, your life path, your destiny path, your creative abilities. You know, release that judgment and let it go. That's a heavy energy. This is about coming into, again, just like the card states here, renewal. We're renewing, we're rebirthing ourselves. And as it explains, we're letting go of the past now. So there might be some energies here this week of reviewing the past, um, going over things that we've done before and what works and what doesn't, um, thinking about how far we've come as we look back on the past. Now, don't dwell on the past. You can review the past, of course, to make adjustments and changes. That's why Jupiter going retrograde is happening this week. And again, it's going to be retrograde uh, through June. So it's allowing us to make adjustments in our belief systems, not to hold on to the past or wish we were in the past or, or even to dislike the past, but this is to just recognize it for what it was, a lesson you know, learned or, or teaching us or giving us those gifts and blessings to move forward on our path. So release anything that's happened in the past because it was all necessary to bring you to the place that you are now and to bring you to the next steps on your path. But this is a very positive card um, as we move throughout this week. Let me see if there's anything else that I can get. I feel like you're going to be getting some messages this week, um, practical messages, written messages, communications from other people, and also from uh, your guides, your angels. Uh, healers, you know, those of the spiritual realm as all. So all types of communications be open to. Be open to listening to your own messages of your higher soul self as well. This is a really great reading for this week. Very, very positive. So let's go ahead and take a look at your special message card depending on your stone of choice. So for those of you that chose the orange calcite, so here we are with our fairy deck, our actually magical mermaids and dolphins deck, which is very Leo to me, which is why I chose the fairy tarot deck and why I chose this deck for the special message card because it reminds me of that Leo inner child, you know, kind of energy of fun and lightness and being open in the heart chakra. So you can see this card sticking up. So this is gonna be the orange calcite people. Simplify your life, okay? This says, eliminate clutter from your home and work life to balance the flow of activities. Now, I have to say the first thing that popped into my mind when I was reading that was also to eliminate clutter in your mind. Okay, if there's any cluttering negative thoughts or fears or anxieties, this is about releasing those as well. And I feel like this is partly, too, speaking of that full moon lunar eclipse energy, which is Friday, for the weekend... Do a letting go ceremony, okay? A letting go ceremony. Maybe you want to write out some things you want to let go, and maybe you want to burn that and release that. Or maybe you want to actually do something more practical and clean out an area of your home or your closet and release some old energies that you don't need or that might be stifling your creative self-expression on an energetic level. So I feel like it's time to just kind of let go of some things, even on a like career or life path level. If there's things that over the last few months or a couple of years just doesn't seem to work anymore, maybe your website needs to be cleared of clutter. Maybe uh, you're writing a book and maybe you have to do some more of the editing process. But I feel like you know doing as much clearing as you can, it actually opens the door for new things to come in. That is what we want. If we want new love, new ideas, new career, new abundance, we have to clear out old stagnant energies. We have to, we have to create space for the new things to come in. And this is really the essence of what this card is about. So as you let go energetically or physically um, of things that no longer serve a purpose, it opens up a space for something new and more abundant and prosperous to come in. All right, let's take a look at special message card for those who chose the amber. So for those who chose Amber, okay, this one keeps popping up and popping up. So Amber people, 
wow, like this card. If you were thinking about uh, an, an area of your life or a, a specific question you had, the answer is yes. It says your intuition is correct. Take action accordingly. So if, you, if, if you've been thinking about initiating something, changing something, uh, you know, whatever it might be, whatever it is that you have a question about or have been thinking about doing or contemplating or wondering if it's the right direction or choice for you, your angels and guides are saying yes, you're spot on, your intuition is spot on, so go for it. Um, this is a wonderful time, it says, again, take action. So this is a great time to take action. I would say more so as we're leading up to the full moon, it's always great to put a new plan of action in place as the energies are gathering for that full moon, especially because we have a lunar eclipse. Um, but even if it is over the weekend, we still have the sun uh, in that positive aspect of Jupiter. So I'm going to say this whole week really is a beneficial time period to initiate something, do something, take action on something, create something, change something. Um, it's definitely a, a positive uh, a positive next step for your evolution and growth. All right, and for those of you that chose the citrine cluster on the end there, citrine cluster, okay, this one is definitely calling our attention. Okay, so citrine cluster people, looks like we have to work on a little bit of self-forgiveness. Remember how the renewal card here talks about releasing judgment releasing judgment towards ourselves, our, about our life path, maybe about other people. This is kind of reiterating this a little bit, self-forgiveness, let go of old guilt, and remember that you're God's perfect child. You have done nothing wrong. There's nothing bad about you. There's nothing wrong about you. Um, this is saying that you were born of perfection. You were born of the spiritual energies of God's source, universe, great spirit, all that is, and in that perfection is where you come from, and that's where you still are. There might be, you know, times that we forget it. There might be times that we have experiences or circumstances in our life that kind of usurp it from us, and again, this goes back to that, the reason why I chose these golden yellow stones, and the reason why we're having this full moon lunar eclipse in Leo. It's about our willpower, our sense of inner power, our inner light. You know, we have to come back to, and it's not that we've lost it, but we have to come back into a realization that we are that light. We are that unconditional love. We are that creative expression of the universe. We've never lost it. It's never went away. We may have somehow gotten disconnected from it, or come into some doubts or fears or anxieties about it and therefore have forgotten it, or again through cer certain situations and circumstances of our life uh, may have been usurped from us or we may have been disempowered by other people or, or situations. But now it's time to forgive yourself and let it go. Forgive other people, let it go. Let go of everything. Let go of the judgments and the lower vibrational energies. And do some self-healing this week and remember come back into your light come back into your connection visualize as you meditate this connection from god universe through your crown chakra down through all of your chakras and then going through the root chakra and connecting into earth mother gaia and that's as above so below you're connecting that universal light and love energy through you and and grounding it so that you come into this more of this realization and manifestation of the truth of your beautiful beingness. So I hope you've all liked this uh, weekly angel card reading. Please make sure if you haven't already to look at the monthly angel card reading for February. It's up on my channel, my YouTube channel under Colleen Lama. Um, thank you all for your likes and your comments and your sharing of my videos, your likes and comments and sharing of my Facebook posts under Colleen Lama or Sacred Soul Empowerment, for checking out my website, Sacred Soul Empowerment, and seeing all the fun things there are there for you. I've actually made some changes and additions uh, throughout the last month or so, so you might want to check it out. There's some new things on there that I think you're going to like. 
I want to send you all lots of love and light and many magical blessings of abundance and prosperity. Mm-hmm.